しまっでに落ちりて、ひけわしどらにしりぞきしも。The biwa, an ancient stringed instrument of Japan, here played by Sylvain Guignard of Switzerland. Guignard came to Japan 28 years ago, and it was 15 years ago that he became a master of the biwa. Now he gives performances both in Japan and abroad. I find his vocal tones to be really compelling. You can tell how much he loves the biwa from how well he plays it. He's very good. Before coming to Japan, Guignard did research on the waltzes of Chopin. His doctoral thesis won high acclaim, and he came to be regarded as a leading Chopin scholar. From Chopin to the Biwa. Today we'll trace Sylvain Guignard's musical journey. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Today we present another in our series called Japanophiles. This may look like the seaside, but in fact it's a lake. Not only that, but it's Japan's biggest lake. It's called Lake Biwa, and it's in Shiga Prefecture, which is close to Kyoto. The name Biwa is、uh, the same as the name for a Japanese lute, and it's said that the lake takes its name from the fact that it's shaped like a lute. Perhaps it's only fitting that our Japanophile for today is a lute player, and a very good one at that. He comes from Switzerland, and his name is Sylvain Guignard, and we're supposed to meet him right around here. Hello, nice to meet you. My name is Peter Barakan, Mr. Guignard. Yes, yes. Nice to see,、uh, to see you here. <laughs> start off with asking a very corny question. This lake is、uh, like a neighborhood place、yeah. for you, right?、Uh, this is important for me because I'm coming from Switzerland and、uh, we have a lot of lakes in the mountains. So for me, it was always a dream if I could make, be somewhere、uh, rooted to be close to a Water to a river or to the sea or then to the lake. I see.、Yeah, so、okay. I'm, I'm very happy here. Guignard teaches classical Japanese music as a professor at a university in Osaka. He uses comparisons between Western and Japanese music to make the subject more accessible to his students. The samurai of old fought many battles. The tale of the Heike is full of battles. To depict those scenes, you need a dramatic way of performing. Today, he's playing the biwa and reciting a 12th century tale for his class. Most of these students are hearing the biwa played for the first time. Because the lyrics are in an archaic form of Japanese, The students have to figure out the meaning from the libretto. I didn't understand it. It's difficult, right? Yes, but I thought it was cool. The modulation, loud sounds, soft sounds, that was amazing. This type of stringed instrument originated in ancient Persia and came to Japan in the 7th or 8th century. It was initially used by blind monks to communicate Buddhist teachings to the people, and they spread the instrument throughout Japan. Over time, tales of war and love were added to the repertoire, and the biwa itself evolved into several different forms. Well, I see we have a whole array of biwa here. Uh, is this the one that you normally use? Yeah, that's、uh, called the Chikazen biwa.、Mm -hmm. This is the,、um, in the whole history of biwa, the most recent one. Story starting a、uh, uh, Meiji period. So, the late, the 19th late, late, late 19th century. Can you just show us briefly on this one、yeah. how it's done? So, you see, this is the,、uh, the plectrum. It was actually made for my hand. So, <clears throat> when you. Uh, 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 play the strings, you know, that's the open string, the melody、mm -hmm. string, and you just put the finger here, you get、mm. the, the, the five different sounds.、No? Mm -hmm. And 
uh, but this is actually not very interesting to m play music for one hour with five sounds. Right. So uh, with finger pressure, uh, you can create every sound you want in this range. So if you have to. Whatever you want. Mm, mm. Yeah? So mm. it's, uh, that's the reason why these frets have to be so high that you can modulate the sound. Okay. That's the beauty of this instrument, that you have your, your finger pressure and you create your own sound. No? Okay. Would it be possible for me to just touch your instrument? Uh, no. Usually I don't. No, I that. thought you wouldn't. No, <laughs> but okay, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay, I watch you playing. <laughs> okay. No, it's just so, that no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. in my... Much um, younger days, I did play a little guitar. I'm just interested to see how yeah, the strings. That's okay. You you hold the bachi like this. Okay. Fingers. So, uh, hold on. Like this? Yep. That's 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 correct. Yeah. Okay. So hang on. So, uh, mm. Now no. you see no. the sound <laughs> is not is not very nice because no. you you push. You, you put your finger on the fret, oh. have your finger just a little bit in Behind before me. the fret, then right. you get the, the sound. So, ah, and then okay. when you, you give it a little bit of pressure, you can make a kind of a vibrato. So, 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 so. Oh, ne? <laughs> oh, one feels the blues, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I won't spoil your instrument, but thank you very much just for the little experiment. <laughs> Now, um, again, coming from uh, a classical background, you yep. would have been using regular sheet music yeah. um, when playing Western music. With Japanese music, I know that each instrument has a different kind of, I don't know, you wouldn't even call it sheet music, what would you call it? Um, it's, a, it's called a, a, a tablature. Score of some, yeah, a a tablature. tablature. How does that work for what you do with the biwa? Yeah, actually, it's, it's very uh, different. It's one uh, way to have a notate or, or to notate the vocal music and one for the uh, instrument. They are completely different. So you don't have, just like in Western music, one uh, staff notation uh, which is good for everything. Okay, can you um, show us some? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for example, this is a, a piece uh, which I use on the stage. <coughs> uh -huh. Looks like this. That's the text I'm singing. Does it give you any indication of how the instrument is to be played as well, or is this yes. just for the scene? No, this is no, no. This is no. the whole score. Really? This is called the White Chrysanthemum. Yes. And this <laughs> is an actually, actually the name of an interlude. And this oh. interlude is only the name of it because this corresponds to this um, book. Shall Can I, I take give that? you this? Sure. Yeah. Here you get uh, the White Chrysanthemum pattern. Um, That's the notation for the for the instrument. So I mean, this looks almost like Western notation, but yeah, it looks like. But it's uh, one big difference. You get here five lines, and we are we think five lines that's Western notation. It's but it, it's not five it's strings the five on the biwa. So I so, see. And you get uh, little triangles facing down, facing upwards, picking down, yeah, picking yeah. up. Tablatures like these are not actually used on stage. In the performance score, short phrases such as white chrysanthemum and peach blossom are used to denote the various musical interludes. There are 150 tunes. To perform in public, a biwa player must know them all. What is it about the biwa that fascinates you? You have a text, and this text must be understood by everybody. Content must come over. You, sh you should really know, be fascinated by what you heard by, here mm -hmm. by the, uh, uh, of the story and of the words. But then comes the interlude and this interlude again tells just with musical means what was in the text. So you have such a uh, variety mm. of expressions in, on this instrument and this is different from all other types. So you have okay. sad interludes, you have uh, very dramatic, you have uh, all, all kind of... Uh, mm. I mean, if you want, I can show you a little bit. About this. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I'd love, love to. <laughs> uh, for expressing sorrow, hmm. uh, you use a lot of this finger pressure I, I showed you before. Okay. Uh, there you can express uh, sad feelings quite well, I would say. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if it becomes uh, dramatic, it's. Okay, there's a battle going on. Some, a, that's a battle going on, and you have all, with a, sword. all a lot of uh, shades of, of expression. It's written like this, but then uh, it's the mastery of the, the Biwa uh, performer. If you really can make you f give the feeling you've sung something, and this is exactly what goes on, it flows into the, into the instrument. That's the charming and the difficult point of uh, playing this music. Hmm. そばこそ次第次第に登り詰め桜間近く乗り切れんぼ森住みすがたを現しにてひとえだ降りてえりにさわしたつや頭の Guignard was 30 years old and already established as a Chopin scholar when he encountered the Biwa. He was taking a class in ethnomusicology at the University of Zurich. Guignard had been playing the piano since age eight, but he actually had good reason to seek musical fulfillment with the Biwa. I like to play the piano for me and for myself, mm. but I couldn't play in front of an audience. Mm. And when I was on a stage and I, there was another instrument as the, the one I had at home and the, the, the sound in the hall was different, I felt lost. I couldn't find, I, I started to notice this, that's not my sound. So you'd have like panic attacks? Panic attacks. So oh, really? Said, no, I'm not the person for playing on a stage, it's bad. Huh. And then comes the, 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 the interesting thing, I come to Japan and because I'm the, the, the only foreigner to play this, they want me to put on the stage. I said, no, it's don't start it with the stage ah. again. <laughs> no, I'm not the person on a stage. I play at home. For me, that's myself. So I, uh, quite early, I got my own instrument. And in the first, I would say the first two or three performances was also horror on the stage in, in Japan. You felt nervous. I, I, I didn't know where is my voice and where I have to put it. Mm. All the things were not coordinated. But then more and more, I had this instrument that was kind of my a part of my body. I felt mm. that, that mm. you never have that. You have this with your own ins piano at home, but no, nowhere else. But here, you take it with you, and you, you tune it, and you get it. That's my sound. My fingers are here, and I got very secure and um, about my performance on the stage. And I never, never had that with the piano. Mm. So. This instrument actually brought me in front of audience of, to may, listen people to the way I think music and I love music. Mm -hmm. I can do that with this instrument but not with the piano. Interesting. Guignard came to Japan in 1983. In Osaka, he met a musician who would change his life. Later, she would be named a living national treasure. 
Kyokusui Yamazaki, Japan's leading Chikuzen Biwa performer. Yamazaki immediately accepted Ginyar as a student. At that stage, he had some knowledge of ancient Japanese, but had never recited it. That made an already difficult task even more challenging. It must have been really difficult to just to get the way that you project that's your voice. A, a, there's a lot of oral teaching, mm. but uh, you have to listen to how the teacher uh, produces mm. uh, the sounds with her voice. And, uh, and she said, just make the same, eh? mm. make the imitation, that's the first step, just to imitate her. Mm. I couldn't do that because I didn't know where, where to, to create the sounds and everything. But I was allowed to take um, tapes. And uh, the first step was when I got these recordings, I just because I felt much more uh, secure with uh, the Western staff notation, I could uh, re rewrote everything in, in Western staff notation. Oh. But when I went into the uh, lesson, I had this away and just uh, produ produced it in the, in the traditional way. And my teacher also said, you're so quick to, to, to grasp all these little um, um, embellishments and yeah. so, and yeah. I showed her the Western staff notation, she couldn't read it, but she was very much impressed. And this, huh. uh, for me, it was just to climb to it because I was so lost in this world of sounds and which corresponds to what. So I was trained with Western staff notation. That, does, that was my, it, it was a kind yeah. of my rescue boat. Lifeboat. Yeah. <laughs> Lifeboat. <laughs> Lifeboat. Have you kept any of the tapes? Yeah. One a very late, from a, a late lesson from 2004. That means she was 98 years old. 98? Yeah. What is what? This is the for example. This, this gives me how, how in this whole story the, the, the accent must come. Eh? There's such things which were so important for me. Mm. So that's it. <laughs> yeah. This is a, mm. uh, we had a, a very nice atmosphere in the lesson. We made jokes also, and she was freely interrupting me and then giving a little an idea. She didn't have to produce a, a stage voice, but it was enough just to accentuate how she wanted to have it. Yeah. Can you perhaps go into a little detail of how your teacher would teach you? One thing which I liked very much it was her way to just accentuate when I'm playing the biwa. Uh, she, was, she sang it with the, the special syllables. Mm -hmm. And uh, this helped me a lot, just for giving the rhythm and where's the accent and where you have to stop a little bit. And so just to this, you can't, mm. this is not, not notated. You, that's, that's a kind of body language. Ne? Okay. It's, it's out of the, of the, of the, of the, of the uh, stomach, mm -hmm. <laughs> the center of the body uh, teaching. And um, yeah, in this regard, I must say something which is exceptional with this teacher. When we were on stage and we had these uh, uh, Biba performances, she was always at the side of the stage, just behind the black curtain. And she said, mm -hmm. Gambare, ne? Uh, 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 good luck. And you went on a stage and she, you knew that she sings everything with you. Not with, oh. really with, with uh -huh. making sounds, mm -hmm. but with her, with her intestines, ne? with her body. And mm. you had this feeling, and you felt Yamazaki sense if she's there, she helps you. And if there was a mistake, you felt that she, she keeps you there. Is that it's, it's her actual, moral support? Yeah. And she was, when she not, wasn't there, I, we had all problems. So it is this way of, uh, you have the notations, you have all these basics, but it's the, 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 this body teaching. Mm. And you get this in Biwa lessons. Uh, sometimes I listen to old Biwa lessons. Uh, and again, again, this feeling how she, she, with her whole body, she taught you how it should be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ginya studied under Yamazaki for 23 years. But in 2006, she passed away. 
Guignard stayed close to his ailing teacher right up until the end. Okay. Here in Japan, you have one teacher, and she had this, she, she knew uh, he starts, if he's good, he, I will teach him for the next, for, 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 for the, uh, until the end of my life. Uh -huh. That was in her mind, naturally. Uh -huh. So there's no way to hurry. He has just to be, to study, and he, he will make progress. It's, it's this confidence, it will come, it will come. It's, you don't have to push, you don't have to make a, a, a quick course for getting better. There's nothing, no quick courses, because you change, your body changes, your mind changes, your heart changes, and it's always this study of, of this music, and then the music becomes what it should be. Uh -huh. of and course. this is this confidence uh, of, of these teachers, of these Japanese traditional teachers, that's, that's, I'm, I'm really uh, admiring that. Hmm. How old was she when she died? hundred years old. A hundred years old? Wow. So actually, I, I was one of the few students she accepted to visit her in the hospital. She was for two months in the hospital and she said, no, I don't want all these students coming to the hospital and so, but mm. uh, I was allowed to go. And I knew her life is Biwa and it, she started when she was eight years old and she did it for 92 years. Good Lord. Huh? Huh? Then she had her 80 years jubilee of stage performance. Ah. So I knew this, this is the point. And I had, a, I remember I had a, a, a performance um, with a piece and I just went with this tape to the hospital and said, Sensei, is that, is that okay when I'm doing it like this? And she listened to it. Yeah, there you have to go a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So I said, yeah, you can go on stage with this. And one, <laughs> one week later she died. Wow. So I... Uh, that's dedication to your Yeah, it's really it? she... And, uh, but I, I felt she loved it. She was so weak. Uh -huh. But when I come with a piece and said, yeah, Listen, and then she was very careful, and then she and she she corrected me, and so. But she was lucid was, right up until the end. Yeah, absolutely, amazing. Absolutely, because that's mm. what that was her life. That was her own mm. uh, world, and that was important. Guignard now performs about twenty times a year. He believes that in order to pass on the techniques he learned from Yamazaki to the next generation, he must be faithful to tradition. In order to heighten an appreciation of the four seasons, Guignard built a home on a hill overlooking Lake Biwa. He and his wife lived there in a peaceful, natural setting. For their evening aperitif, they enjoy locally brewed sake. Their daily meals also feature Japanese cuisine. Do you eat rice more often than bread? It's half and half now. In the past, we ate mostly Western food, but we've had more and more rice as the years go by. Since coming to Japan, we've become fans of pickled vegetables. These are pickled in sake lees. I love them. My favourite. And we love pickled plums too. They're so sour and salty. What's this? Pickled pumpkin. Ah, pumpkin. Guinea says that he feels more at home living here than in his native Switzerland. Sometimes I'm asked if, you, if I would go back to Switzerland when I'm fin f finished my uh, university uh, career here, would I go on with the Biba? That's mm. a big question. Mm. To be honest, I'm not sure. Really? Because for a short time be in Switzerland and play the Biba, it's my instrument, it's my body. It's, 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 uh, but I know that if for a longer time I'm, I'm there, mm. this instrument could go uh, away from me again. And that's why I'm fearing to, <laughs> to decide to go back, I must be honest. So, at this stage in your life, what does Japan mean to you now? I'm, it's possible that I explore every week, every year, every month, uh, new things still. It means uh, 
to have an, a, a, an open field for new experiences. That's, I think this is still in, in Japan. And uh, I mean, if you also talk about music, uh, there's all the things I don't yet understand, not perhaps in the Bima, but in other uh, aspects. Uh, when, you, when I come to, 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 to the European uh, art and music and life, I always have the feeling, yes, basically you know what it is. Yeah. But here, very often I thought it, I know what, how it works and then it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And it's again, you have to, to reconsider, you have to adjust, you have to get a new interpretation of what you experience here. And this is, thing, I think, what me, keeps me uh, lively here <laughs> and, and um, makes the life interesting. Yeah. So, uh, to have on and on new uh, possibilities, new doors open, Mm. Uh, f for getting new no knowledge, new experiences, and so that's that's the way I, uh, how Japan is important for me. Late May, the annual rainy season has arrived earlier than usual. Today, Guignar is visiting a local Shinto shrine to inspect the venue for a summer concert. <laughs> He performs at this shrine almost every year. This time he discovers that the priest has actually renovated the room in preparation for the performance. It's an old building, so we want people to use it more. I'm delighted with what you've done. I recall that it used to leak in the rain. So it's safe now, very nice. It makes me happy. Sylvain Guignard has been in Japan for 28 years and his life is deeply embedded in Japanese culture. The everyday experience of Japan is now indispensable to his performance on the Biwa. Next time on Begin Japanology we present another episode of Japanophiles. Our guest is Stéphane Danton of France, whose unique concoctions are opening new horizons for Japanese tea. Asian Voices One-on-One. -on -one.